So the iPhone X was arguably the most anticipated device of 2017, and for really good reason. It was Apple's biggest refresh in 10 years since their original iPhone. In a way, it's a refresh that adds a bit of nostalgia to all of those original iPhone users. I think this is a particularly interesting phone because Apple is trying something new, and I think they're going in the right direction. I'm really excited about this. Let's jump right into the video. Thanks to my friend for lending me his iPhone X. The first thing that stands out is the design. This phone almost looks like a CAD render that was ported into the world. It's so perfect. Despite this phone being extremely breakable, it looks nice. I personally would put a case on this because number one, it's gonna break if you drop it. And number two, replacements for the back are really, really expensive. Literally half the cost of the phone. So just get a case, a simple $20 investment, might save your device from getting cracked. I personally like the black model because those are the types of colors that appeal to me, but different people might like different colors. And also the chamfer on the black one looks really stealthy. That is kind of similar to the first generation iPhone, but it has a futuristic look to it. The screen is one of the biggest changes on this device and it looks really nice. It looks like a piece of paper with the True Tone technology and the OLED panel from Samsung. So these combine together to create an immersive experience that is really hard to find on any other phone just because of how Apple tunes their hardware to be exactly perfect. Now there have been some hiccups throughout the process such as the screen dimming, but I think this can be easily fixed over time and Apple has been pushing out updates frequently to fix these bugs on this phone and that's really good on Apple's part. Now another big thing about the stream, the notch. People were really disappointed because number one, it cuts off your content and second of all, some apps don't blend in well which I think it will take time. Some developers haven't even updated their apps from the iPhone 8 slash 8 plus aspect ratio. The notch wasn't a big problem for me. Using it even for some time, I'm not really distracted by it. When I'm using the phone in portrait mode, it's not a big problem. But if you're watching a video like this, either it's gonna get cropped out or you're gonna have huge black bars around, which doesn't look very good. So we're gonna have to wait for things to iron out before we implement a new standard maybe for video. Also, people were saying that web pages don't look good and in my opinion, they look totally fine. It's not a big deal. Some web pages actually adapt the notch to match the color scheme of the web page and it blends in really well. And most web pages will do that because of HTML5 and how it works, so that's great. Now to the camera. This one has awesome picture taking capabilities and pictures come out very nicely. Now Apple has increased the saturation this year, but I think that's just to appeal to more people that are trying to switch over from the Android side. And the LED performance is really good even on the telephoto lens because they've added optical image stabilization on both lenses, which is different from the 8 Plus. And that's one of the biggest changes from the base model iPhone 8. Now you also get 4K 60fps, which is very rare to see even on professional cameras like what I'm using. Remember the home button? It's gone. It's replaced by a gesture based system in which you slide up from two different sides of the notch, you swipe up to go home, you, you swipe up and to the right to get into multitasking, and it's totally different than what iPhone users have been used to. I think most of these gestures are pretty intuitive, except maybe the control center, which I think they can fix through a software update. And when people say that it's really hard to swipe up apps, first of all, I think Apple did that on purpose to make us avoid swiping up apps. And anyways, Apple is optimizing the background tasks and idle apps really won't eat up a lot of memory or battery life. Apple is trying to discourage users from swiping up since it really doesn't help your battery life and it actually can harm it if you do it a lot. The removal of that home button means another thing, no touch ID. Apple has replaced this with a new technology they call Face ID, which uses facial recognition sensors to scan your face and let you in or out. Right now this technology is in infancy, so it's not the best. If you've seen some videos on YouTube, a kid was able to unlock their mom's phone and I think that Apple will definitely improve over this using software updates and on their next generation iPhone. This is a very interesting technology. It uses infrared sensors to send dots on your face and they scan the dots. This has worked pretty well in most conditions, but the only thing is it's slower than Touch ID, which I think you can expect. The speed of this is comparable to first generation Touch ID and Apple will probably improve this over time 
to make this extremely, extremely fast. Battery life has been pretty good. It lasts the whole day. I can't really talk about more long-term things like how face ID will fare after you grow a beard or you get a haircut or your facial features kind of change. But I think we'll see how it goes. I'll try to keep you updated in the comments down below. If you already haven't, please consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome tech videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed this content. Anyways, this is Shrey here from Shrey's Tech Tips. Have a great day.